Derek, first off, just looking at your Instagram, the last year, year and a half has been really big for you. Shot your mm -hmm. first TV movie, now with Model House. Just as far as being a, a leader on set, what are the most inv invaluable lessons you've learned within the last year and a half, two years? Because you coming into this, you've already been a vet, but what are the biggest lessons you've learned within that time span? Yeah, I think, you know, it's something, uh, obviously, I've, I have a had a career as a music video director and you know there's not much time on set doing a music video you might have a day or two and um you know i think the most important thing is that i um you know you have to know what you want coming into it you know coming into the day know what you want and, and if there are any issues you have to uh you know be able to think quickly on your feet and um come up with solutions and you know i think that's like the biggest thing i think especially for new directors where they might not necessarily know what they want. And, you know, when you're on a set, you know, it could be 10 people, 100 people, you know, you have to be a leader. You have to show that you're confident in what you're doing so that everyone else around you feels the same way. And, uh, yeah. Now, also being a writer, because there's so, there's so many people who talk about writing a script, but very few people get to finish it. I yeah. think finishing a script is also a very big feat. What was the key for you as far as finishing the script? And was it actually not as hard as I'm envisioning it? Because maybe you, you might be a natural writer as well. No, you know, I'm definitely not a natural writer. I uh, It's hard for me to write scripts. I haven't started writing scripts until a little bit later in my life. I mean, I went to school and, you know, learned how to write and uh, was always into it, like always had an interest in it. But I thought you know what, someone will give me a script and I'll be able to direct that movie. And and that never happened. So I was, so, you know, in my late twenties, I started really writing. And and like you said, it's hard to finish scripts, you know, I would maybe get 20, 25 pages, 35 pages in, and then I just kind of leave it, you know, leave it, shelve it and uh, never really come back to it. So now, you know, I can write, um, <clears throat> I write pretty often now. And what I, you know, I do silly things like I won't shave, you know, until the script's done and, you know, my beard will get really itchy and it'll just make me focus and say, okay, well, I can't deal with this much longer. So I better finish the script. So I'll do things like that. Or, I, you know, if there's something like I want a burger, I'll be like, well, I'm not eating a burger till I, till I finish the script and little things, you know, or a trip, vacation, something like that. So that, that always helps me at least to, to get things done. That's pretty insightful advice. But for Model House, what was the key as far as just creating characters? It's an ambitious screenplay because you have so many different talking characters. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is within the confined space. We won't even get to the third act, not, not spoiler stuff, but just being an architect as far as the third act and also creating characters that stick. What was the biggest challenge for you on that writing level? Just was it hard to do that? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest challenge was, I mean, number one, you know, I'm not a 20 something year old female. So, you know, writing for them was challenging, but also, um, but also trying to, I, I didn't want, you know, everybody has the stereotypical model in their head, you know, a fashion model and, and how they are. And I, I didn't want, you know, I know a lot of these women and, you know, I, do, I didn't want, um, I, I didn't want them all to seem the same. Or what people perceive as like what a model should sound like, talk like, or you know what they would do on their daily, you know, on a daily basis. And I also wanted each character to feel different. Like the you know the girls that we cast, they are in 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 real life. You know, I'm, I hang out with them all the time. They are all really different. You know, and and uh, in, in the film, they're kind of playing a version of themselves. So that was also helpful when you know when in writing these characters. I already knew I wanted Kira Santoro to play Nadia and Haley Lawton back to play Trudy. So as I was writing, it was it was uh it was pretty easy to to you know write those two characters in particular. How much did it help for your production to have a veteran actor like Scott Taylor Compton on board as part of your ensemble? And then also what's what's great for me as a cinephile is I get to look at someone like Corey Ann Roberts and say, oh well, she's really good in this and yeah. I want to see her in more. So talk about that balance as far as really uh, fleshing out your ensemble. Mm -hmm. I mean, r right from the beginning, I always, you know, if I was going to make a movie called Model House, I've wor I worked in the fashion industry. I've done fashion videos. I wasn't going to hire actors to play models. My goal was to to get actual models to play models, you know, and I I found models that obviously wanted to act and I auditioned hundred, hundreds of girls and, um, you know, obviously, yeah, Corey was great. They're all amazing. And they, you know, a lot of them, they um, 
they went out of their way to get acting coaches. I mean, they really wanted this role to, to be special and they didn't just kind of phone it in. And that was, you know, most important to me is finding, finding these models that number one, maybe wanted to act or want, have always wanted to act or uh, had some experience acting, or at least just find models that um, really wanted to, to make this movie, you know, their, like their passion project. And and having Scout, that, that must help too, as yeah. far as with, with the role she plays. And she's pretty, she's done a lot of great work during her time as well. Exactly. So, I mean, that, and that's the thing. So with the models, I, you know, I made sure we surrounded them with uh, seasoned actors, you know, and I think that really helped because they were comfortable on set, you know, it wasn't, they had veterans there to look up to, to talk to. I mean, a lot of the girls, they would, you know, they would go to Scout. I think Scout was even helping um, Natalie Newton Boom as kind of in a in a coaching role, acting coach before the shoot. Uh, you know, they were all, you know, they looked up to Chris Zilka, Randy Wayne. Um, you know, a lot of the the cast, they were, they have obviously been in a lot of other things. So um, it definitely helped having them around on set you know, for, for us, but also for the, the cast of models. Well, they got, well, without giving too much away, one thing I really appreciate about your movie is it's pretty much uncompromising in its storytelling as far as this is not a light, fluffy piece. There's things that happen that along the way that makes it pretty much a starts off pretty light and then it goes into that horror thriller mode. Can you just talk about, was that your initial inspiration behind writing the script and, and directing it as well? The fact that it's not, it's uncompromising in its execution. Yeah, definitely. You know, I obviously it's it's um, you know the genre of this is a home invasion thriller, and and you know that at least that much probably going into the film, but I wanted people to sort of forget that you know, and and I think that's what you're talking about, where you know in the beginning of the film you're not quite sure where this is going, and um, you know, and that and that's that's definitely something that I was uh like conscious of and and wanted to to do. Just make it. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Final couple of questions from the stuff you've learned within the last year and a half. What are the lessons? Uh, what are you going to take into your next project? Because I'm sure you're excited. You're you're growing a little bit. Of, you're writing stuff, stuff right now. Do you have stuff in, in the works? And what are you excited to actually, as a filmmaker, just tackle next? Yeah, no, I think, um, you know, I always, I, I always uh, say that my next project is always going to be my best project. And, and I, you know, there's so much that I've learned, especially, you know, directing Model House a few years ago, and then the Lifetime movie more recently. Um, you know, it's it's. Uh, I'm excited to. You know, obviously, I still want to do thrillers, but right now I'm writing a romantic comedy. Um, you know, I'm I'm very interested in in uh, going into different genres, and you know, I'm I'm excited to see how this film does, and I and I think it's a uh, it's going to be interesting to see you know um, the audience that it finds. Derek, final question is just right off the top of your head. Can you name one of your all-time favorite movies? And what is it about this movie that speaks to you today? Yeah, I think, you know, it's it's funny. Um, probably my all-time favorite movie is Snatch. And uh, Guy Ritchie has always been one of my favorite directors. And, you know, I not to say that I have my style is anything like his. I just, I, I like movies that entertain and, um, you know, that have entertaining people in them, interesting looking people in them. And, I think Guy Ritchie is really good at doing that, you know, from Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, you know, and now even The Gentleman, like just everything that he 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 does is, uh, you know, I find very interesting. And I'm also half English. So, you know, my whole life I've kind of been watching his films and that style of film. Thank you so much for your time. Really enjoyed Model House.